What if I told you that you have it in you to change the fabric of the universe around you? Unlock the secrets of the heavens. Be powerful beyond your wildest dreams. Then you're probably playing a game of make-believe like Dungeons and Dragons. In case you didn't make the connection, I'm the nerd living on the Outer Rim, and this is my journey. My name is Tommy, and today I want to show you how you can make an awesome sawmill for your tabletop gaming world. This video will also feature 7 advice that I believe is helpful for crafting and helpful IRL. First, let me show you some shots of the final product. I'm a lifelong nerd, from before the nerds took over the world. I have this flaw, I tend to go all in with what I do, and after discovering Dungeons and Dragons one year ago, I started crafting terrain and different kind of props for my game. I was so inspired by some of you out there on YouTube, and I wanted to share some of the things I've learned, and hopefully show you how really easy it is. I have split this video into two parts to not make it unnecessarily long. This video dedicated to crafting the model and the next doing the paint job. Here you can see some pictures of the final product. It's not perfect and it really doesn't have to be. It has a lot of flaws but I'm still quite happy with the results. I'll share with you some techniques and some of my thinking to hopefully get you started too. I really hope to share this journey with you. Subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button. And now let's craft. First, I needed an idea, and I remembered from uh, playing Skyrim that there was a sawmill that I thought looked kind of cool, and uh, that would be a nice addition to my buildings. I also knew that this would challenge me a bit, because I needed to use different texture techniques and also different kind of materials. And um, even though I found pictures online of the Skyrim, Skyrim sawmill, I couldn't just copy someone else's build. This is the first takeaway. Challenge yourself to improve. This time I also went out of the house. I know you don't like to, but I dare you. So I was out driving and I found this old building outside on a, on a field. This old weathered wooden building, it was destroyed, but the wood structure and the um, the weathering was kind of perfect for uh, what I was going for. Um, I went outside to take a picture of it uh, and I'll show you. Okay, so this wall is kind of perfect for the look I'm going for. Maybe. Ah, oh, it's a nice reference. Anyway, it's awesome, right? This wall is even better, I think. This wall is easier for me to build and it's amazing, right? I use a lot of XPS foam in my builds as it is an amazing and cheap material to work with. I cut out 15mm thick square strips of XPS and just cut the edges with a knife to get a round shape and use the brass brush to get the texture to imitate wood. For the walls I used a sharp pencil to carve out the stone texture. Use the pattern you like, but try to change it up between your builds. You know, the world doesn't have just one look and your builds shouldn't have either. Don't use the same technique every time, you'll get a crafting burnout. And this is your second takeaway change it up to avoid the burnout. And here you see me use aluminum foil to just texturize the surface of uh, the stones. I mostly use PVA glue on my builds and I use needles to hold everything in place. PVA glue, Elmer's glue, carpenter's glue, basically all the same thing. 
You can use hot glue or super glue if you rather want. I like the clean look of the PVA glue, but you might prefer the drying time of hot glue. Do what you like and what works for you. I'm not proud to admit it, but this hobby its not very wife friendly. Make sure you reboot your table once in a while. You'll perform better and your relationship will last longer. Third takeaway, don't upset the people you live with. For the flooring, I cut out some 15mm thin strips and just cut the edges uh, randomly. I then filed the edges to round them off a bit by using my favorite glittery girly nail file that I got from my daughter. I then used the same brass brush technique to imitate wood. So far so good, I like what I see. Look at the things you're happy with and be sure to tell yourself that you are happy. You'll probably never get the credit you think you deserve from others, so be sure to credit yourself to keep up motivation. And this is your fourth takeaway, give yourself credit to keep up motivation. To make the basic structure of the roof, I cut out some strips of XPS and I used the thickness of them as a guide to cut out a small portion on top of the poles. This is where the roof will be fastened to the rest of the building. Look, it fits perfect. I also textured them with a brass brush. On the end of the planks, I used a pencil to make the growth rings that a real plank has on the end. I imagined that the planks needed to be fastened to a top piece made from wider and thicker materials. Here I use a hot wire cutter, you can use a knife if you want. I took the piece and I just measured it against the pillars, so the planks would meet the pillars going down from the top of the roof. I'm thinking that this piece is uh, uh, several wooden planks on top of each other and I need to cut out a part and carve in some patterns to make it look a little bit more interesting. the nail file to soften the edges a bit. I'm not cutting this, I'm just using a pencil just to imitate that it's several wooden planks on top of each other. Don't forget the ends. This will be actually what is most visible on the piece. Again the same brass brush technique. Now it's time to glue everything together. I use the needles to hold everything in place. Now it's time to fasten the roof planks. I have textured them but only on one side, actually the side facing down as uh, the, roof, the, the top of the roof will be covered with shingles later. I 
I needed a lot of needles for this. Uh, but remember, you don't have to use PVA glue as I do. You can use hot glue and then you don't need needles. So, this is where the timber would be pushed for the saw to split it. This is not difficult to make. I use the same technique, strips of XPS and a brass brush. You can also use a pencil to make a more exaggerated wood grain texture, like I did on the end pieces of the roof and the floor planks. That's also very cool and you'll get a more cartoonish look and I can show you that in another video. But for this build I will be using the brush. Gluing everything together with PVA glue. I was thinking that this sawmill would be close to a river and that the running water would give energy to the mill through a water wheel. I have no idea how this is built in real life, but neither does most of the people looking at the build. Even though it would be cool to make this as close to reality as possible, but I will leave that to someone else. I really didn't want to focus on the um, absolute realism in this build. I wanted to keep this process light and fun and I always weigh the different strategies against each other and if someone asks me why I did decided on this or that I always say mm, I have decided to do this as a result of an overall assessment of all factors. I say this not only for my builds but in life general just ask my co-workers. You know, it's tough to argue with a statement like that. So this is your fifth takeaway. Close any unwanted discussion with stating that this is a result of an overall assessment. You know, in this build I'm actually not measuring much. I'm actually just eyeballing most of the cuts I do. Actually, this was a bit finicky to do, but I think it turned out quite uh, well. This is the end piece for uh, the wheel. I don't have uh, footage of me um, gluing it to the wheel, but uh, you get the picture. The roof shingles is cut out of super thin strips of XPS foam. This might be hard to do without a hot wire cutter, but you can use cardboard from a cereal box or similar. This process is quite time consuming, but I find it to be stress reducing if I could kind of get in the zone. Listen to some music while crafting or maybe an audiobook or something. Time flies just there and then and the most important thing in the whole universe is to cut out a roof shingle and gluing it in place. Just continue until you're done. And this is your sixth takeaway. Get in the zone to get it done.
I needed something to hold the saw blade, like a mechanism that would appear to make the saw blade go up and down. So I designed a frame and uh, here I'm cutting out some holes for it. Even though it would be cool to make it functional, this would be so much more time consuming, so I just glued everything in place. I wanted to use a real metal saw blade, so I bought a jigsaw blade, the cheapest I could find. I think the blade looks really cool and it really enhances the look and feel of this build. And I used my Dremel just to cut out the top of the blade. I used super glue to fasten this as I wanted it to set immediately. I cut out a piece of XPS to make a gear. In hindsight, I wish I'd used a real gear. I could have probably found something from an old toy or something cheap in a thrift store. In the end, it turned out okay, but it would look way better with something out of real metal. Don't beat yourself up about it, but always evaluate your piece and decide on something that you would like to improve the next time. And this is your seventh takeaway. Evaluate results to improve. When you freehand with your hot wire cutter like I do here, it's important to use the lowest temperature possible as this will allow you to work slowly without melting the foam.
After cutting out the room for the gear in the floor, I needed to make some planks to fasten on the underside of the floorboards. Finally, I needed to cut just the end pieces of some of the floorboards to make room for the water wheel. So far, I'm very happy with the sawmill. The paint job and some final details will make this look way better, but it's getting there. The final takeaways, they are challenge yourself to improve, change it up to avoid burnout, don't upset the people you live with, give yourself credit to keep up motivation, close an unwanted discussion with the stating that it's a result of an overall assessment. Get in the zone to get it done. Evaluate results to improve. Thank you for watching and take care. Lots of love from the nerd living on the outer rim of the world.